Hello and welcome to Veris' Zoning System Selection and Pricing Tool. My name is Jen McGregor and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. If you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to enter them via the questions tab on the right hand side of your screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, you will have um, an answer, um, question and answer session if time permits. And also today's webinar is being recorded. So the recording and all the questions submitted along with the answers will be distributed in a follow-up email. I'd like to introduce to you today's uh, main presenter, Michael Benelli. He is a commercial product manager with Johnson Controls. And we also have Brian Wathen joining us today. Um, Brian is a um, commercial product manager also for Johnson Controls. So without further ado, go ahead, Michael, and I'll let you take it away. Great, thanks, Jennifer. Um, my name is Mike Benelli. I'm the commercial product manager for Johnson Controls, um, representing Verisys here today. Um, the video here is really here to um, discuss this tool, which is a selection tool with regards to Verisys. Its, it's goal is to help you um, in, in selecting the controls. It's going to give you a, a final bill of materials. It's going to be a great aid in asking or answering application questions, finding some videos, device updates, um, so on and so forth. Um, we will have time at the end of this to ask questions. I'm hoping to get done in less than an hour. Um, if time permits, we can spend that extra time talking about the controls and the latest updates. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you might have and I'll be happy to answer. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. I think you guys can. And this is really a tool that I've been working on creating um, and kind of honing in and, and updating for the last two years. Um, prior to my current role that I recently just moved into, I was the application engineer for Verisys. Um, a lot of you have actually had experience calling into the hotline. I was on the hotline answering pre-sale support questions. Um, as activity grew, that was um, something that kind of um, got a little bit daunting, but it was it was still fun to do and still is fun to do. I'm kind of covering that as well as we were looking to backfill that position. Um, but we have this hotline where if you have any questions with what you see today or anything that you might have in the future with regards to application questions or the controls themselves, please call this hotline. If you call it, it goes directly to me. It will go directly to another application engineer in the future. Um, and if they have any questions that they can't answer, it'll still route back to me. Um, we also have three individuals on a post-sales perspective. So when you call this hotline, you press one, it goes to pre-sales. If you press two, it goes to three individuals who are in a queuing process to help you with field support questions. Um, it's definitely something that we think brings a value add to customers and it is not going away. So please, please use that. Um, and then you can always reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to help. This is our uh, home page. Um, it's not meant to replace some of the order entry systems that we have today. Um, I think the, the primary one that everyone's using and is being switched to is Selection Navigator or HVAC Navigator. I still encourage you to use that tool. Um, it has updated pricing. It's something that I'm going to be spending time taking a look at and trying to refine with regards to Verisys. I do believe it's um, very complete, but there are some adjustments that we need to do. Um, what's great about this tool is some questions that are answered while you're going through the selection process and what you find throughout. Um, for example, right here on this home page, we have a very simplistic view of Verisys. Um, with, here's our smart building hub. It lets you know that, hey, you know, can it support up to 100 devices? Um, it's kind of like the heart of this system. Um, we're going to move forward and start selecting it in a moment here. But it just, again, I want to spend some time to show that this is kind of where we can support single zone package, either smart equipment or third party rooftop units. We also show that we can support zoning systems, whether it be changeover bypass or VAV applications, third party or smart equipment. We can support that. And then as we move on towards the end of this video, we're going to talk about how we can support more advanced applications with our application controller line. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll discuss some other applications coming down the road, even lighting. Um, on the right here, just on the home page, it kind of shows you everything that we've been up to in the last year. Um, again, Verisys is coming up on its two-year anniversary. Um, but you can see that we've made some very significant just to this, this document alone, not including devices that we've released. Um, along the Verisys product line. So this lets you know that, hey, you know, if I've got a version of this document and it's been maybe a month or two, maybe there's another version that I can go out there and get. Um, and you could, I think you can find that on um, Selection Navigator. Is that right, Brian? You are correct. Yeah, so if I want to get the latest and greatest document, I can go there and actually try and find this. Um, currently, we're on uh, version 41. I believe a lot of you have version 40. This is something I had just released a couple days ago. 
Um, there are some comments about additional features that we can add to this. So I'll probably be working on 42 starting tomorrow. Um, and that'll probably take a week to vet out and test. Um, on this main page, we have a couple cool things. One, I can go right here, click this little bubble, and it's taking me to verisyscontrols.com. And this is kind of the, the hub, right? So we've got a tool for selection, but then I've got a website where I can store a lot of critical information. Um, I got a few tabs up here, but the most important one I would say would be this login section. If I go into this login section, um, there, there's a, you have to actually register. So if I back out of here, I'll have to register. And that typically takes a little bit less than 24 hours. But once I do register and get access, um, there's some really important features back here. A lot of it is going to be housed in what I think is the product information and support. So if I drill into that, I've got some really cool things like device updates, drawing templates. So this would be your wiring diagrams um, for the control specifically, guide specs, and even literature that we're trying to host. Um, so I really think that this is critical. Critical. If you don't have a login, make sure you click that login tab right here and you register, create an account. Let's go back here. Another really cool um, thing on this home page is going to be this bubble right here. So this is where our latest videos on Verisys are hosted. If I click it, I mean, this is going to be a contractor's best friend right here. This is going to be a salesperson's best friend. This is my best friend. Um, I've got a, a wealth of Verisys how-to videos with regards to commissioning and startup. So if there's something I want to brush up on either before a job or on the job, I can do that. Sometimes I don't have the time to read or I don't have the documentation with me. Um, I've got the Verisys sales video. So if I want to go in there and actually present an opportunity for an engineering firm, I can do that and brush up on how I can talk about Verisys intelligently. And then I have additional videos in here. So we're going to move on from this. Um, and if, again, if you have any questions, make sure you write them down or ask them right away. Jennifer will bring them up at the end. So this is where we're starting. We, uh, if you saw up here, I've got a bunch of tabs. The first one is start, and then I've got clear all. This will clear selection that you have made through the entire document. It's on every single page, so you don't have to go back to the home page to click it. But if I click start here, it really just it's a simplistic document that works left to right. Um, as I mentioned, there's important information on every single tab. Um, a lot of it has to do with the controllers themselves and Verisys. So here it's the first page where you can select things. So I'm saying adjust quantities as needed. Verisys this, in this document is as simple as just filling in the quantities you have in these zero tabs. So Verisys right now, since it's relatively new, there's not a lot of existing buildings with existing Verisys control systems. Um, a lot of our jobs are new, so well, we've only had a handful where Verisys is pre-existing and they want to do an add-on or expand upon the existing Verisys controls line. But all new buildings typically have one or two smart building hubs, depending on the size of the building. Um, some people ask, when am I going to have to expand into two smart building hubs? And really, it comes down to, you know, am I going outside the, the, the size of the Wi-Fi? Do they not want to tie into the building network? Um, do I, it, it really comes down to, I want to have a smart building hub on every single floor. Do I have multiple tenants? Those types of questions. But typically every job has at least one smart building hub. And that's what we're going to do today is actually do, um, a hypothetical takeoff. So we're going to do one smart building hub. The original smart building hub did not look like this. It looked a lot like another uh, product that we had called the map tool. Um, we repurposed it and used the map tool for Verisys at, at the original launch and then very quickly. Um, went beyond the capabilities of that uh, that hardware could support, so we created another one. Um, we created the the SBH 200, which is the Smart Building Hub 200, and it's it's a really beautiful looking device. Um, it's got the capabilities of having 24 volt screw terminal power. Um, I can still use the power kit. It's got removable Wi-Fi, so if I don't want the Wi-Fi stick or Wi-Fi within the building, I can remove that. And as of December, it has um, BACnet over IP uh, as well as BACnet MSTP. So it is a really great device. Um, I forgot to mention it has a built-in end of line as well. Um, the, the original one didn't have any of those features. It didn't have an over IP. It didn't have removable Wi-Fi. And it didn't have 24-volt um, uh, screw terminals. Because of the 24-volt screw terminals, currently the Smart Building Hub does not come with its own power supply. Um, that's why I threw in here that it's recommended that you purchase one with it. You do not have to do that with the Wi-Fi dongle. That's because the Wi-Fi stick actually comes with the hub. So we're going to actually include the power supply just so it gives us options. If 24-volt power is pre-existing, then we could just tie it directly into the screw terminals. 
We have a, additional network accessories. Um, we had some other ones that were in here in previous documents, um, such as wiring. Wiring can be sourced from a bunch of different locations, so it's not a part of this document moving forward. It might become of it, but the two major ones that we have is a backnet repeater and a backnet end of line. So this end of line, not all of our Verisys controllers have a built-in end of line, so you may need to have one. Um, I try and call out which ones don't, so that way you can know when you're actually sizing the job. <clears throat> excuse me, and then a, a repeater. So a repeater, typically I take a look at how many devices you're gonna have on the system bus. So that means how many devices are gonna be directly connected to the smart building hub. Um, there is a, uh, a, a run of a, a run length that you might wanna take a look at. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's 3,500 feet where you might wanna take a look about having a repeater as well. Um, the great thing about this though, is any of these products, you can actually click directly on the hyperlinks embedded in the document and it'll take you to product literature to the document online. So that's a nice little nested feature where I can click on that hyperlink and then I could read a lot about the, the product right then and there and then go back to it. Um, you have to have an internet connection to do so, but if you do, again, you can actually have that feature and read about the products themselves. So we're gonna work left to right. As I said, every job starts with a smart building hub. Um, instead of moving directly into HVAC, I move into an IOM device. Um, and this is kind of something that I'm very proud of and that the Verisys team worked really hard on, which is our Verisys IOM. The original IOM started with um, two bi uh, binary inputs and two analog inputs. It couldn't do scheduling, it couldn't do alarming, and it only had four binary outputs. It was really simplistic in what it could do. This one is a little bit more complex, um, and actually we're continuing to expand upon it with side loops. It currently does not have a side loop. Um, it only has nine binary outputs but we have five analog inputs, four binary inputs. Um, we could do alarming off of those. Um, we can do scheduling off the outputs. We have uh, simple interlock logic if and or statements. Um, it has a wealth of units that you can select based off the input. So you can do many, many different sensors for many different applications, whether it be building pressure, water detector, um, CO2, um, I try to take as many different sensors that Johnson Controls offers um, and embed them in this document and uh, give them availability for you to click on and read more about where you can connect them up to the IOM. So it makes selecting um, applications that you wanna bring into a value add or get creative with um, with the IOM um, very easy to, to, to tackle, I would, I would say. Um, in addition to the analog and binary inputs, we have the SA bus. So we actually have an SA bus, a sensor bus that we can connect um, to the IOM for net sensors. So if I wanna connect some hardwired net sensors, I can do so. And these are some popular ones that people will try and use. Um, going along that line, we now have wireless uh, network sensors. So if I want to not run or install um, network sensors and run that communication wire, um, I can actually use a wireless option where I use a, trans uh, a transmitter and a receiver and do one-to-one -one or one-to-many sensors. Um, so it's a nice little value add. Again, I call it the hotline if you have any questions on applications or what the IOM, IOM can do. Um, the biggest thing that I think is great to watch is this little video right here. So if I click this, it should pull you up to a video that's roughly about 37, just under 40 minutes long, where it talks about how you can actually configure the IOM. So it's a great app or a great video to watch. Um, one of the product managers from the Verisys team previously made this video. I think it, it speaks a lot to what the controller can do. So if you have an opportunity to watch this video, I encourage you to do so. Moving on, this still has to do with the Verisys IOM. Um, this is something that's coming soon that has been delayed through Johnson Controls. Um, we are currently setting it up. It's gonna be energy meters. So with the, uh, the Verisys IOM, I will be able to connect uh, Senva energy meters and have them sourced through Johnson Controls. So what I created in this document pending the release of the product is this calculator where you can build out some of the parameters of your energy meter and be able to get a part number and easily tack it onto this build materials and then boom, you can walk away, place the order in either Navigator or contact your local JCI account manager and he can work with you to get the quote. Um, it's gonna be a great tool. We'll have a video on actually how to do it. We have one already. Um, just, we currently do not have a way for customers to buy this. So it is coming soon and it should be out I mean, it should have been out a couple months ago. It should be out, I would say, at least in the next couple of weeks. 
moving on, we really start getting into HVAC now. So before that, we had, you know, the, the smart building hub, which is, like I said, the heart of Verisys. Um, we had an IOM. We talk about energy meters, but now we really start with equipment. And the way I tackle it in this document is we start with single zone standard um, applications first. Um, and the reason we do that is because when you get into zoning, A, not everyone has access to zoning. Um, we're working on training to allow people to come, have access to that. But currently, everyone has access to single zone smart equipment and everyone has access to a smart building hub. So that's why we start here, because it is, I mean, you know, it doesn't get easier than that. I have one thermostat connected to one rooftop unit. And the difference is, is now I'm connecting it to Verisys. Um, with regards to Johnson Control smart equipment, the equipment comes with a smart simplicity equipment board. Um, if I have backnet communication on that control board that comes with our equipment now, um, I can directly connect that into Verisys. In fact, when you're building out equipment now in, in the future and in the, in the years past, and a year and a half ago, um, there's a Verisys drop-down option um, when I'm building out the equipment under communication um, for a single zone, changeover bypass, or VAV. And what that will do is it will add the backnet communication card on the, uh, the equipment for you. You don't have to worry about having it. Um, if you don't have it and you have an existing uh, smart equipment board on a job that doesn't have a backnet communication card, I have that part number right here where you can just adjust the quality and add it on. In fact, we're going to do that here. We're going to assume that there is at least one single zone smart equipment rooftop unit that does not have backnet communication. We're going to assume that it is pre-existing, so I didn't have the opportunity to build it out when Verisys existed. Um, or maybe someone forgot and now you want to give the building owner the capability of seeing their equipment in the Verisys system. Um, it's a relatively low cost retrofit. Um, I'll have you talk to your local account manager or um, sales representative to figure out how much, but it, we're typically talking noise in comparison to the overall job and it's a very easy car to install. When doing so, the biggest thing with smart equipment is we cannot use a standard thermostat with Verisys. Um, and we wouldn't want to because a smart equipment board how it houses a lot of the brains inside of it and a thermostat um, that connected to it will override those features. So we really want to use a net stat um, off the smart equipment rooftop unit and use that to monitor space temperature. Now we have a variety of net stats that customers can have, whether it be LCD display versions that shows temperature, no display, um, relative humidity versions, some with logo, no logo. We give you options that you can go with. Um, I know a lot of contractors like to prevent having displays so they don't get callbacks. It's really up to you which you want to use. Um, any of these will work with smart equipment and are sourced in source one. So if I select this one right here, I think I can do up to three per rooftop unit. I even think that that average is actually five and not three, but I know for certain we can do three. So um, it, it's safe to say that we can move forward. So we've got one smart equipment rooftop unit here. Um, that doesn't have a backnet communication card, um, and then we're just going to move on from here. Um, th the nice thing about this as well is we have this application um, box down here that shows you um, what smart equipment can handle, and it can, the only thing it can't is modulate, modulated cooling and humidification. So now we get into our third-party solutions, right? Um, again, this is the very basic of Verisys. You know, it's great if I have Johnson Controls rooftop units um, being uh, closed on where it's going to be on the job. If I have existing rooftop units where the building owner or, uh, does not have the budget to, to replace that equipment, but is still looking for a Verisys solution or still just loves the solution that it's brought with smart equipment and, and the Verisys um, features together, um, we have the capability of tying in third party equipment with Verisys. Um, and we do that using traditional thermostat terminals um, provided on third-party equipment. Um, you know, your Y1s, W1s, um, standard um, thermostat terminals that you would find in your house for residential units. We use that to tie it in to Verisys and we put our controller directly on it. So we use that at the beginning with this TEC thermostat. Um, right now it's got a monochrome display. Very soon we're going to actually have a color display that's going to be replacing this. Um, same footprint, same applications. Um, I have a chart here that shows you what the TEC thermostat can do. So all you have to do when you're taking a look at existing equipment is ask myself, do I have anything more than two stages of cooling, anything more than two stages of heating? If not, great, we're in the clear. If I have any sort of modulated cooling or heating, the TEC thermostat is not a solution. We cannot integrate it using this device into Verisys. I can still do heat pump control. I can still do economizer control. 
but I really have to make sure I don't get into the red here with regards to sizing up a job. Um, the TEC is most commonly used for rooftop units. It can be used on heat pumps, furnace heat, uh, furnaces, unit heaters, you name it. And we have versions with JCI logos, no logo, occupancy sensors, no sensors. For our sake right now, I'm gonna say we don't have any third party single zone rooftop units on this job. Um, but I do wanna mention that before I leave here, we do have a wireless option of that thermostat now. Um, this is really great if you don't wanna get into retrofit uh, opportunities inside the walls and find something you don't necessarily wanna find. We can support, I believe, up to 30 or 36 wireless thermostats um, per zone coordinator or wireless pro coordinator, excuse me. Um, this wireless pro coordinator connects directly to the smart building hub. Um, I believe you can have more than one of them. And we even have a video here that talks about estimating wireless on your job. I encourage you to watch this video. Um, wireless doesn't always mean it's the best solution for you. I know there's a lot of buzz in the market about wireless and having it on a job. Wireless does not always mean that it is the best solution. I encourage you that, that you watch this video. Um, sometimes depending on the architecture of building, it can be troublesome and more costly to approach, but it really depends on the opportunity. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and call me and we can talk about it. Moving on, um, we're stepping away just for a second here um, from single zone applications and we're moving into uh, more advanced applications, which would be zoning. Um, particularly, Verisys can support changeover bypass, VVT, and um, VAV applications. We can even put VAV boxes on a changeover bypass application, which is great. Mm -hmm. Gives you more flexibility, specifically where you are in the market. You might have perimeter heat where you want to use VAV boxes, and as you get into the interior, it's back to changeover bypass zone dampers. Um, it starts with this zone coordinator. Um, Verisys requires every zoning rooftop unit. It requires every zoning rooftop unit to have one of these loose board or excuse me, one of these zone coordinators. Um, so all your zone dampers, all your VAV boxes will be connected to this brown terminal block. Um, and that's what we call our zone trunk. Um, you can only have one per zoning rooftop unit. Doesn't matter if it's changeover bypass or VAV, I can only have one. And we give you two options, the loose board or the panel version. Personally, I like the panel version. Um, it comes with its own transformer, so it's got its own power supply, comes with its own enclosure. It's more costly, but I don't have to figure out a mounting solution, and I don't have to figure out 24-volt power when I get on, this, on the job. Um, it saves on installation time. Um, we're going to actually size up a zoning system, and we're going to do a third-party zoning system on this job because smart equipment is just so easy that I really want to show you um, some of the other controllers that we have. Um, I'm going to assume since because I picked the panel version that I have enough transformer. I do have enough power for this controller right here. It comes with a Y65 so I can power two controllers off that transformer, but we only have one. So we're going to stick with that for right now. Again, I said that we're going to size up a third party um, zoning system. That means that we don't have JCI equipment that doesn't have the smart equipment board. Um, there is no need for me to buy the comm card. Again, this shows me what the smart equipment can handle when you're sizing out the job, um, which is fantastic. I'm going to move on to the next page, actually. And this is our third party zoning system solution. Um, our third party zoning system solution uses our application controller and we call the part number the LCVEC100. It can do VAV or changeover bypass. There's no programming. There's no uh, there's no programming tool. There's no coding. All our Verisys controllers have the uh, programming already installed on the app, uh, on the controller itself. All you have to do is connect to the controller and you can set it up on your phone, your smart device, um, which is pretty nice. There's no licensing fees or anything like that. Um, with that, you kind of get this canned application and constraints with what the controller and application can support. So this controller can do quite a bit, but it's not the end all be all, right? I can only do up to four stages of cooling. I can only do up to two stages of heating which is great. I know there are some opportunities out there that have modulated heating or modulated cooling with regards to a zoning system, but in our case, we cannot support those at this time. We are taking a look at it, and it is something that we are, are, are taking a look at this fiscal year trying to provide on this controller. The reason being why we can't support a lot of these applications is because we ran out of inputs and outputs on the controller, which means we would have to have a larger device. Um, it's not to say that we won't provide that. We're just taking a look at it this year. 
Um, we still think that this controller fits most of the market, and so far we've seen that in the last two years. Um, so we're going to size up a job, right? We're going to say we have one third-party rooftop unit. I don't care who the manufacturer is. All I really care about is that I have those standard thermostat terminals. We're going to connect some of our outputs that enable stages uh, of cooling or heating um, in, in this case. And then I move down the line, right? Um, so I say that if you don't have some place to use smart equipment, you're going to need this controller. And then I say right here that you, for supply air temperature, the sensor is mandatory. For return air temperature, it's optional. Personally, these sensors aren't that expensive. I know I have to have at least one of them, so I might as well do two just because I want to measure return air temperature as well. Just, just for giggles, I can see it in Varus, I might as well have it. Um, I move down to other sensors. Um, duct stack pressure is measured at a bypass for a changeover bypass system with Varus. So this is really only required for the controller if I'm doing a VAV system. Uh, because a changeover bypass system with Verisys can support both zone dampers and VAV boxes, I'm going to show an opportunity here using changeover bypass. Um, just note that if this was a VAV um, rooftop unit supporting VAV boxes, if it had a drive on it, we would want to measure duct static pressure at this controller, and then we would have to have these sensors here. And at this time, we do not. Again, the low cost of these sensors, I always like having outdoor air temperature so I can see it if I'm going to do demand ventilation control or economizer control. I want to have an outdoor air temperature sensor, so I'm going to throw one of these on there. The rest is up to you whether or not you want to include it. Uh, for my for this purposes, I'm not going to include filter status or fan status, return CO2 or zone humidity. You can absolutely add them to the controller. Don't worry about that. It really We have fixed inputs where you can connect the sensor. That's not a problem. But we're going to move on. And the first thing that we go to um, is VAVs. So these are our VAV controllers. Um, right now we have three different VAV controllers with Verisys. Um, and it's we can support up to either stage box heat, incremental box heat, or SCR box heat. Right now you have to make sure that you select the right one depending on the box heat that's going to be present on the job. In the future, we're actually going to have one controller that replaces all three of these. It was released in December. We're working on actually getting it set up for ordering. It's going to be the LC ZEC 510 controller. And it really makes selection a whole lot easier because it can do all fan types and then all the types of box heat. So it's an all in one controller. Really makes selecting the right controller a whole lot easier um, with regards to VAV boxes. In this case, I'm going to say that we have, I don't know, let's say four parameter VAV boxes with SCR heat. Um, we're going to select four of these controllers. They have to be field mounted. We don't have a factory mounted option in here. So if you do have factory mounted options for Verisys, Verisys um, I would continue to use them if that's important to you. Otherwise, you can field install these controllers on a BAV box. All you have to do is take the existing controller off if there is one um, and, and install the Verisys one. With the Verisys BAV controllers, we have to have NS sensors. Um, we can't have any other type of sensor that uh, for the controller to monitor space temperature. Um, that's important to note because with zone dampers, that's not the case with Verisys. Um, that's why it's the only option here. I'm going to go with the LCD display, um, JCI logo, dial option for adjustment. And I'm going to match actually how many BAV controllers because it just makes sense. You have to have these sensors. The discharge air sensors, I mean, it's not required for our Verisys controllers. But again, I've, and I've said it before earlier, um, these sensors don't cost a whole lot. And personally, I like to know when my VAV box is heating and specifically when it's not heating. Um, and I can do that using these discharge air sensors. So they're, they're just a no-brainer. Add them in there. Um, the, the, where they're going to be costly is coming to do the install, and it's, it's not going to be a whole lot. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, we do have a balancing thermostat if you want to use that. This is something that you take on the job and off the job. If I wanted to leave it and have it be a space temperature, I absolutely could. But this tool, this tool is a little bit more expensive than NS sensors, so I'm going to definitely only use that for commissioning. And then I still have CO2 versions of the NS sensors that I could use as well. Moving on to the next page, we get into zone dampers. And as we started with this job, or specifically this rooftop unit, we said it was going to be changeover bypass, right? I could have a changeover bypass rooftop unit have nothing but VAV boxes if I wanted to. It has happened. doesn't happen a lot. But I could have VAV boxes on the job where the equipment has no drive, and I still need to bypass. In this case, 
we do have a factory mounted option for for dampers. Um, we have loose controllers right here, which would be the LCZEC 310. That's meant for his own dampers, not a VAV box. We have loose dampers here. Um, they're all round dampers. And then I have also um, factory mounted options as well. And they range anywhere between six inch all the way up to 18 inches where the Verisys controller is already mounted onto the damper. I could pull up this information and see engineering specs about them. Really makes selection easier, really makes the installation easier. In our case, we're gonna assume that because the rooftop unit is third party, that this is a retrofit and the dampers are pre-existing. Um, so we are actually gonna select just the controllers. And I'd say, I think six would be good. Let's do six controllers. As we move down, we now we have six controllers <clears throat> and I have two options for zone temperature or space temperature. I can use either hardwired sensors connected to the controller, which will go physically on the inputs, or I could use the NS sensors. Now, because we have the VAV boxes using NS sensors, it just makes sense to stay, be consistent throughout the job. I would want to do that. We do have instances where people want to do plate covers for um, hardwired sensors. So they're going to go that route instead of having the wall mount NS sensors. That's why we offer that feature. We're going to do the NS sensors. We're going to move down. Um, we have the option to do occupancy light switch. We can do CO2. We can even do slave dampers. <clears throat> so if I want to do a secondary damper, it's important to note that if I want to actually have two dampers that move together or in unison, they, uh, they open together, they close together, um, the Verisys controllers for the zone dampers have an output directly on them, 0 to 10 that will open a, or send a signal to an actuator and open a slave actuator or a slave damper. What you do not do is you do not take one of these controllers and wire it to another one. It, it's just that we don't have it set up that way. Each Verus's actuator is also a controller and they're smart enough where they only, they, they don't speak to each other. They're independent. They do have to be connected to the zone co coordinator, but they do not talk to each other and you cannot slave these. I would have to use a dumb actuator if I don't want to do slaving. Again, if you have questions about that or how many or sizes, feel free to reach out to me on the Verisys hotline or the Verisys application engineer. In the future, we'd be more than happy to help. Moving on, we've done VAB boxes. We've got our third-party rooftop unit controller. Now we're going to move into the bypass damper. Um, as we get into the bypass damper, we can start talking about, you know, do I want a factory mounted option? Do I want a loose option? Um, I, we were going to talk about sensors that are required. In our case, let's see here, we have a retrofit, right? So that's what we were talking about. So I'm going to assume that the damper already exists, but the bypass controller does not. So we're going to select one of these. We still have the option, just like the previous zone dampers, to get the factory mounted solution. Um, what doesn't come with the bypass controllers is the um, duct static pressure transducer and the probe. The reason being is, is that you don't necessarily have to use these sensors. All you have to use is a pressure transducer and probe that fits the zero to five inches of water column and a zero to five VDC signal. Um, the Verus's bypass controller is set up to receive only these um, inputs. If you go outside of this range, um, your bypass is not going to open properly. Um, so in this case, because it's not part of the assembly, I'm going to select one. I need one of each. I need one FTG per DPT. And then call it out here per bypass controller. So we're going to do that. If I wanted to get into a situation where I wanted to do a slave bypass, where I have two bypass dampers serving the same rooftop unit, I would have to get another actuator. Again, you could use this one. But what I can't do is have two bypass dampers um, using BYP200 connected to the same rooftop unit. And move on. So we're going to stop there. That really does cover um, our selection for zoning systems. Um, it, it's that simple with regards to Verisys. Um, we can, like I said, we have uh, VAV controllers, we have zone damper controllers, we have third party rooftop controllers, and we have um, bypass controllers. We have the sensors that are associated with them. And that's where this tool really shines. It shows you um, all the sensors that you need for each controller. It shows you the applications that a device can support. Um, if I click on one of the in product informations or even click on application notes, it'll take me directly to information on the controller right there, which is really, really powerful. 
Um, if I move down or actually move on like we just did, we're now. Sorry about that. We're now on to um, applications, uh, advanced applications. And this is the first application that Verisys came out with. It's the Verisys app advanced application controller. And the first one that the Verisys team released was the constant volume application. Um, it comes in two, form two forms, the 18 point version and the 32. And depending on what you're trying to achieve, um, you might have to use just the 18 point or the 32. What I did is I went through the application note and I split it up, right? So I took a look at all the applications that the 18 point controller can support, which would be here. And then I went through and selected all the sensors that would be associated with one of those applications. And you can find it just scrolling down on this page. Um, the constant volume application would be used really when you exceed the capabilities of the TEC thermostat or you don't want to have a digital display inside the space. So the 18 point controller can do everything that the TEC thermostat for single zone systems can do or that we saw earlier. Um, and it can probably do, it actually can do a lot more. The only thing it doesn't have is a display. This is mounted on the equipment. It's not mounted inside the space where you have the touch screen. If I want to go beyond that and I have an existing rooftop unit that has modulated heating, modulated cooling, or I want to be able to control humidification or even have Title 24, I would use the 32 point controller. Um, again, I selected all the sensors that you would need for those applications that you would have to buy in conjunction with the 32 point controller. Um, but again, um, we're really proud of this application. We're going to be still um, utilizing this existing hardware. Um, when I buy this current controller, it comes with a factory with no application loaded onto it. And I call that out right here. What the Verisys team is doing is they're writing applications and they're hosting it on VerisysControls.com. Um, I can even back out of it and go back to the website where I go to product information on VerisysControls.com under that login information. So here I got to log in. Enter my password, go to device updates, and then go to Verisys application controller. And as you can see, we have three applications currently loaded on there. All I have to do is download one of these applications, put them on a thumb drive, and, and, and connect it to one of those application controllers through a USB port, and it loads the application with the desired, um, or loads the controller with the desired application. Um, it really makes it simple. There's no licensing fee again. I don't have to pay for the application. All I have to do is pay for the hardware and the sensors and the labor to install. That's that's pretty neat. That's that's a, a nice value add, and it gives them a lot of room to continue to develop um, other other things this controller can do. Um, we're going to move on here. We have a video with regards to the application controller. Um, we still encourage people to call the, the Verisys hotline or email where we can answer questions and discuss future applications that will be coming out. But let's go to the next page. So kind of piggybacking off of that, we do want to go back to the TEC a little bit and talk about the fan coil unit. This is kind of an awkward place for it to be in, but we do have a version of the TEC thermostat that can support fan coil units. Um, we have versions that do, can do on-off control or floating outputs. We have versions that can do proportional outputs. Um, zero to 10. Um, we have versions with an occupancy sensor, no sensor, humidity control, no control. We can do a lot with this TEC thermostat. So I definitely want to still talk about it and, and show what it can do. And it, with those options, we still have the wireless option as well, where we can connect it to a zone coordinator and then fill in either gaps in our communication with um, one of these repeaters. Um, it is important to note with the wireless solutions with regards to the TEC, um, we use a uh, Zigbee Pro uh, for communication. Um, so if you are a fan of Zigbee, way to go. We can do that with the TEC. And then we have additional sensors down here. Um, again, we have a video on estimating wireless, so please don't skip that. It really will help you with regards to sizing up your opportunity and determining whether or not wireless is right for you. One of the newest things with this document is actually um, the lighting page. So this page did exist in version 40 and older versions of this uh, selection tool. What's new is we have lighting panels that are going to be associated with it, where I have a, a lighting panel that can either have no relays, no contactors, here's the dimensions. I have a version um, with relays, no contactors, and then I have a version with relays and the contactors associated with it. We can do up to nine lighting circuits. Um, they can be controlled either off of schedule or no schedule. 
Um, we have light level sensors that we can use to, as inputs to the, to the sensor or occupancy sensors as well. So it's kind of a nifty little application that we have. It still piggybacks off the application controller. When you're approaching a building owner, it's nice if, if they're interested in a complete solution or at least if you want to provide them a good, better, best option. This kind of distinguishes uh, us in, in the market. We can go to them and say, hey, we do have the capability of integrating your lighting to your building if you want to be able to see that and run it off the same schedule as your HVAC. Um, specifically, if I have the IOM device where I'm doing energy metering, it's nice to have that. But let's say we're done. Let's say this is everything. We've, we've come to the last tab. And I said, I've got nothing else that I want to select. I would click the finalize selection tab. And that tab is on any page. I click it and it takes me to this build materials. Um, this build materials has all the, the sensors, all the controllers that are within this document. And if I click the filter selection button, it filters everything that we've selected on the job. Um, it's really nice that we have that button. I can take a look at it and now this is what I have. I can send that to a contractor and say, hey, this is what's coming with your control system. Make sure that you look for all of these. Um, and then there's one more added feature here as well is if I click on this button right here for videos, or I can click one of these, um, it will take me to another page here that has videos specific to the selection of the job. And within these videos, it will talk about the hardware themselves, commissioning, and startup. It is only applicable to the items that you've selected. It tells you whether or not you need to watch them. And if I want to see all videos that are available in this document, I just click the reveal all button. Obviously, there are a lot more videos that um, have to do with controls that were not selected on the job, so you don't need to watch them. But if you want to review or just learn, this is a quick and easy way to do so. Um, they're not advanced videos. They are very simple where they, it's an individual sitting in front of a camera talking about them, but it's very good content. And we plan on adding to them. I'm going to go back. Again, this is our bill materials. This is everything that's going to be a job. It gives me a description. It gives me the source one part number. Um, I can find those part numbers in HVAC Navigator um, the or in Selection Navigator if I want to use the Johnson Controls version. Um, but I can use these part numbers in HVAC Navigator and, and cross-reference to make sure I've selected the right ones. And if I want to use this for quoting purposes, I click this button right here. Um, and this takes me to pricing. So this is pricing for all the part numbers that are associated in this document and whether they're available today. Um, it is important to note that pricing is subject to change, so I wouldn't rely on this 100% all the time, but pricing typically only changes once a year, so overall it's pretty good. If I click the filter selection button, boom, now I have my list price with all my source one part numbers. And if I want to enter my multiplier, um, or you can work with your account representative with Johnson Controls and figure out what that is, and it will tell me what my buy price is. So if I adjust this, hopefully no one's got 0.8 buy price, but if you do, that would be my grand total for the job that we just sized up where I can see that I have a smart building hub, um, I've got a power kit, I've got one smart equipment unit with the NS sensor, that smart equipment unit does not have a communication card. I have at least some zoning systems and I can take a look at how many, well this indicates to me that I only have one zoning rooftop unit. Um, it, I go down, it tells me it's a third party, not a smart equipment. The MZ tag stands for multi-zone. Um, it tells me which sensors are associated with it. It tells me I have VAV boxes on the job, what sensors. It tells me how many VAV boxes. Um, and again, this is just a really good tool to discuss what I have on there and where I can find out more information. At the end of this, let's say I have another job that I want to size up or start all over. I'm going to just hit the clear all button. And it takes me back to the very beginning where I start all over again. Um, a good, again, this is a great tool. We're very proud of it. Um, if you have any questions, now would be the time. Brian, Jennifer, if we want to start questions, this would be a good place to start. Yeah, great. Thank you, Michael. Um, first question, where can I get updates for devices? Um, so the, the place where we can find updates to devices would be on verisyscontrols.com. So if I click this button right here, um, it takes me to the verisyscontrols.com website. If I go to the login button, I click that. I'm already logged in, so let me log out. It would take you to this site right here. You would have to create an account for a login, and it typically takes, I would say, 24 hours or less to get approval for your registration. Um, so make sure you do that ahead of time, but I'm already registered, so let me log in. Make sure I use the right password. 
I'm going to log in here. And now I have everything with regards to technical information, marketing resources, brand guidelines, even videos with regards to JCI. But if I want to get device updates, I'm going to click on product information and support. And then I'm going to go to device updates. And now we have everything, whether it's smart equipment, the TEC thermostats, the wireless thermostats, older smart building hubs, the newer ones, our third party rooftop unit controller, or even our zone coordinator. I have all device updates um, present um, and it should be the latest and greatest and as well as inst installation instructions on how to do the update. So if I click on the zone coordinator, I'm going to have update information of what you're getting with it and the file that you can install through a USB drive. Any other questions? Okay, great. Um, how many wireless thermostats could I connect to a wireless coordinator? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, I believe it's 35. Um, we can always you, you can always call in and we'll check for you. We have engineers on on standby that could actually answer that question and throw it up to double check. But I believe we can do 35 um, wireless TEC thermostats. Again, when I'm doing third party um, wireless um, TECs, um, it really comes down to the architecture of the building. Um, so we can do 35, um, but that doesn't mean you're going to have the best signal strength for all 35 wireless thermostats. So I encourage you again to watch this video. You might have to use some repeaters to actually um, fill in the gaps in your communication and your wireless network. Um, but we have tools to get you there and to make sure that you have strong signal strength. Okay. And do you have standalone zone dampers? We do not at this time have standalone zone dampers that integrate into Verisys. What we do have and that's going to be standalone um, is actually going to be our VAV controllers. So as I mentioned before that we have this new controller that's coming out relatively soon that's going to be the LC ZEC 510, not the 410, and it's going to be an all-in-one controller. So not only is it going to be able to do all these box types of heat, um, you have the option of not connecting it to Verisys at all. It'll be able to run on its own standalone. Um, it's going to modulate the damper based off of flow. Um, what you could do if you had a zone damper is retrofit that zone damper with cross flow pickup tubes and kind of turn it into a VAV box with no fan. Um, but as it stands right now, we do not have a zone damper controller that is standalone. Okay. Um, do you have to use shielded wire? Um, no, and that's a, a good question. Um, I don't think I had talked about it. So um, typically it, we use for the system bus, 22 gauge, three wire for the communication bus from the smart building hub. And that's because Verisys runs on BACNAM MSTP. So every device that's connected directly to the smart building hub will use three wire. And then I always recommend use it, using shielded wire. Um, the shield, as everybody typically knows, um, is to prevent against high voltage. Um, we give you an opportunity to, to land that shield. So if you have it, I would definitely use the shield. If you run into an opportunity where there is no shielded wire, you can test the communication and see if it'll work, but there is no guarantee. And we do not guarantee that Verisys will not have communication problems. So long story short, if you have a shield, use it on not just the system bus, but also the communicate or the zone bus and the sensor bus as well. Okay, and we have one more final question. Um, where can I find this uh, sheet? So Brian could answer that better than I can. I believe you can find it on HVAC Navigator. Brian, comment? Yeah, um, HVAC Navigator under uh, Controls and uh, Verisys. Uh, also on UPG Net under um, the Equipment Catalog, Zoning Controls, and then, of course, um, uh, Verisys there, you will find uh, this uh, spreadsheet. Now, right now, the version 40 is out there. Uh, Michael and I have talked. We're making a few... He's making a few updates, and uh, we'll probably put version 42, I believe, out there probably by the end of the week. Yeah, that's right. a great question. Go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, one more question just came in. Uh, we have time here. Um, can you use a combination of wired and wireless network sensors with one SBH, or would that require two SBHs? So if you... I want to split that up into two different questions. Um, I wish I could actually clarify on that. So on wireless sensors, the wireless sensors to me is the, the network sensors. So if I want to go to the IOM device real quick, clicking the tab to get there very quickly, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. So if that makes you sick, um, you know, tough it up. But 
we have wireless sensors right here. Um, we can use one-to-one -one or one-to-many, and that will connect directly to any device on the SA bus right here on our zone trunk. Um, I, I've heard rumor that we could do it on smart equipment, but I haven't tested it, so I would shy away for that until I get an update. Um, but if you're talking about wireless TEC thermostats, um, that would be completely different, and that would be connected to this uh, wireless coordinator. This wireless coordinator does not take the wireless sensors. All it does is wirelessly communicates through this antenna to the wireless thermostats. Um, you have to set um, some of the addresses on both the wireless thermostat and the uh, wireless coordinator, but it does not communicate to the wireless sensors that I could use on the ION most commonly. You could do a combination of both, but I would have to have an IOM connected to the smart building hub and a wireless co coordinator connected to the smart building hub, but they would be two separate systems or two separate devices. Okay, great. Um, so if there are no additional questions, um, this will conclude our webinar for today. Over the next few days, um, everyone will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recorded webinar and um, any questions and answers from today that were submitted at this time. So thank you all for joining and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Michael. Yep, no problem. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.